Let's have a huge round of applause. Thank you so much sir for sharing your observations. Yeah, uh, anybody would like to have uh, the presentation, you can get it from them. It's not a problem. Also, um, you can reach out my mail lady. We can share this uh, PFMEA uh, for your supply chain risk and mitigation program. I have a complete uh, dossier with us. We can share it with you for your economic purpose. Thank you, guys. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, moving on to the next session, which is about new age procurement strategy. And for the same, I would uh, like to introduce the speaker. Mr. Mukesh Nandanjha is a seasoned professional with extensive project experience in power sector, including solar, generation companies, distribution companies, and transmission companies with more than two decades with KEC, Starlight, Adani, UB, Reliance, and presently with Vikran Group. He has a strong background in purchase and contracts, focusing on techno-commercial aspects and supply chain management. His notable achievements include leading procurement and tender activities for substations and a battery energy storage system. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put a huge round of applause for Mr. Mukesh Nandan Jha, General Manager, Supply Chain and Logistics at Vikram Engineering and Exim Private Limited. Yeah, Nitin will also join us. Yes, yes. And also another speaker for the same session, Mr. Nitin Athavli. He is a highly experienced general manager and head of supply chain at Rachna Lifestyle in Pune. With over three decades of expertise in finance, strategic planning, procurement, warehousing, logistics, exports and imports. He is a versatile professional. Nitin also shares his knowledge as a visiting faculty member at various universities, including Pune University and is pursuing a PhD in Lean Construction. His Black Belt certification in Lean Six Sigma underscores his commitment to process excellence and continuous improvements. Let's have a huge round of applause for Mr. Nitin Athavli with us. Thank you. So, requesting you to begin with the session. I think PPT already connected. Yeah. Hold. Direct to this Next. Ah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again to all there. I think all the members who wants to listen once more. So. We have a one thing what I have skipped in the morning session that is a, a session on the new procurement age strategy. So what strategy we are going to follow for this 2023 and coming year and what shall be the major roles for new age procurement strategy for all the procurement leaders for the coming by 2050 and what they could do. So we have a something, our ask with the government, our ask with the buyer, our ask with the lead buyers. So starting with that, the first slide already, Nitin is there and uh, already we are already introduced by the team members of GS. By one of the things, what supplier relationship management and uh, which is a subject topic and everyone is aware about that because we all are the procurement leaders. So no need to describe this word. But with respect to the 2023, where we are stands for and what we are the critical challenges with the procurement teams. First, might be they have the data, complete data in the scarcity of complete data with them. How much suppliers data bank they would have to be cater or how much the supplier data save they have to understand how many total suppliers or the so total partner vendors available in the market 
who can work with them. Because we are not working only on the price strategy, we are working on the partnership strategy, we are working on the VFS strategy. VFS is, stands for vendor financing. What internally, because partner is financing to the, their uh, the supplier is financing itself a point of a credit terms of the credit period to their buyer and the buyer is the same credit terms pass on to their client. So, uh, so complete this strategy uh, to, with the respect to the strong rela relationship with the new expectations from where one is the buyer, another is the supplier and the third who is the transporter. So the three buyer, supplier and transporter relationship jointly mixed together for this 2023 strategy where I am just uh, discussing about the total seven points we will discuss in this. First is the use of technology. Technology means in the procurement, technology is first thing where we can use the ENFA or the portals where we can directly send the inquiries to the supplier without any proper concern from the buyers. So total number of supplier list on the web portal and your inquiry will be converted into RFX and that directly that will send to the suppliers. So that one technology what we are using nowadays and what changes we require? We require there should not be the complete botherness of the buyer because once if management has freeze, these many suppliers are complete approved for one of the categories like you, we can add a transformer is the one of the category what we are using. So major uh, suppliers of the transport like Hitachi, GE and all the suppliers are already implemented in the list in the portal and the inquiry is directly sent to them. It's no any loopholes for the buyers and the supplier relationship that they could each individual they can raise a complaint on the same. So this should be the new age of procurement where we are stands for blindly sending an inquiry to the competitive and the extraordinary suppliers who approved for that product. So where you can, we can stop the role of, of any uh, gap between the buyer and the supplier. Second, we are thinking about the sustainability from since morning we are discussing about the sustainability. So sustainability is the nowadays first requirement for all of us. And the same points I am not going to repeat but sustainability is the same. We have to work that how much data, how much report, accurate report with us. The accuracy of the sustainability is important for us. Third, we are going for the strategic sourcing. It's a simple, it's coming from list since last five to six years strategic sourcing for the long term relationship with the partners. But now, when we are connecting with availability of the material, connected with the delivery of the material and third, for cost of the material. So these all three strategically comes one together. First, when credit comes to all the three phases so that your, your uh, rotation of the financial implication will come to the next level. So that is the one strategy we can connect it with the buyer, supplier and logistics, all the partners and including the client because you are getting the, you are also providing credit to the, your end clients. So that is connected with the steady source. Next, next, some of the freezing of LSP partners for the ESP, uh, for the EPC companies. But who are really into the LSPs, they could again connect it with the shipping lines and the forwarder and the shippers. So that is the third strategy they can do for the logistics sections. For the buyer supplier, we have already cons uh, considered that number of suppliers who can give the IFC terms of the credits and how they could both can assign. Either they can connect it to the bank also and they can get the uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the payment uh, security from them, their ends. So that combination strategic sourcing required nowadays to mitigate time, to mitigate the time, delivery and finance, all three. Time, money and cost that we can take it from this, their side. So and next is the increased collaborations. Still we can see some of the gaps with the supplier, some of the gaps in the internal CFT. CFT stands for the cross-functional team who are the internal stakeholders. If procurement is the team of the one stakeholders, then another stakeholder is the project team. Third stakeholder is the engineering team. So the individual three teams has to internally 
increase their collaboration so the final output will come proper otherwise things will that we are asking for the 680 megawatt each module and somebody will buy the 500 watt of module which is under rating so that we could consider how we increase the collaboration between us that is the required especially required because previously missing these gaps in with the uh, with the procurement team next is the emphasis on the compliance already well known so i'm just uh, you're taking the more time on this greater focus on data and analytics same data analytics which where we have to understand we can increase the uh, demand and the supply chain of the our internal team as well as with the other uh, other shareholders also the growing importation of uh, importance of cyber security where we are talking about the many uh, it companies who are supporting on this and they are also growing day by day and they are providing this uh, service to us because we have all the data on our server that can might be taken care of. because last day i remember the some of the good company uh, in epc division whose data was hacked by the international party of that so so that is the one part where we have to focus nowadays the last is the increased uh, use of blockchain today morning i think blockchain was be taken care by procol also that is the blockchain which is the we have to increase the use of this next is the procurement policy for the new age what we already speak, speak uh, in the morning one of the part is that what government should provide to us some of the percentage already mentioned in the market the for the 25% for the msme and the other parts where we have to place the order to them and the other 4% for the total procurement goods from the micro and small we have to increase this so that local local market will come into the into their uh, into their further level of development and who can come to us because when we develop this small partners finally that will increase the major major demand of our country major demand of uh, the epc industries major demand of the steel industry and all the industries where requirement of these things and second sustainability procurement sustainability already spoke in the morning also as well and we are adding this with the esg so principles into the procurement policies what policies we already 